Hi everyone, I'm Lucas, software engineer from Dynamics. I hope you enjoyed the little clip. It was realized with our updated Unity Fashion Animation plugin, Previs. In this tutorial, we'll see how to use it to bring your characters to life. Before getting to the heart of the matter, I will give you some needed information you have to know to begin. So let's go. Before starting, be sure to respect all of these prerequisites. Install and launch an up-to-date version of Grabber. Create a retargeting profile for the real time with Performer. If you have any question about that, don't hesitate to watch our tutorial on the topic. Use 2017 or newer version of Unity and import your three character in your Unity project. This tutorial will be cut in four different parts. First, we will set up the previous plugin in a simple Unity project. Second, we will improve facial expression with some tools provided by the plugin in order to obtain the same result at the clip at the beginning of the video. Third, we will see how to reset all the modifications brought by the plugin. And finally, we will record a video in Grabber from the plugin using a live instant profile. Here is the Unity scene in which we can see Cole, the character we'll animate with previous plugin. This 3D model contains some bones that constitute her body, her eyes and her jaw, and some blend shape for facial animation. First of all, we'll copy the plugin in the Project Explorer at the root. Now, we can see a Dynamics folder inside the Project Assets folder. This folder is cut in three different parts. Documentation folder that contains a PDF files that goes over all the things I'm going to show you today. So if previous plugin behaves strangely or displays some warning messages, you will find explanation inside. Resources folder that contains all images needed by the plugin. And script folder that contains all the code to bring a character to life. The main script we will use is previous.cs. It is the main script that manages all the others. We need to link this script to our 3D model. I'll drag the script on my character's root. If I select it, the plugin appears in the inspector. Now we have to connect previous plugin to Grabber. For that, let's focus on the connection settings panel, which allow you to configure the IP address on the machine Grabber is running on and the port number. I started Grabber on my computer, so I leave the default localhost IP address. Also, I leave the auto connect option checked as I want the connection to be automatic. To configure the port number, we have to go in Grabber and open the Network Services Configuration window. To do that, click on Network and Services Options. Now, check which port we are currently streaming the animation on. This is the port 5559 by default. In Unity, I also enter 5559. If I have several characters to animate at the same time in Unity, we have to select a specific port number for each character. To know which port is linked to which character, click on the retargeting profile selector and move the cursor over each profile. A label will display the port number associated. Then, let's load the real-time profile that will be used to animate call. I created my profile with our Live Pro solution, using videos of myself in a head-mounted cameras. So, I'll select Load Live Pro. Now, I will open the video I previously recorded with Grabber. And don't forget to start the tracking by clicking on this button. Let's go back to Unity. Now, if I press play, I can see my character moving. If I look back in the inspector, I can see here that the status is now connected. As you can see, Cole's eye seems to be at the wrong place. We get this anomaly because Cole has been exported from Maya and the coordinate system is different than Unity's. More precisely, the x-axis doesn't have the same direction. So we have to invert the x-axis by checking this box. The head orientation is useful only if you use the free head mode in Performer. OK, Cole's face is now right animated by the video that is playing Grabber. But I'm not plainly satisfied by the rendering. I'd rather her mouth close and her face more expressive. Let me show you how to do that. To boost or ease some shapes, 
you have to head for the blend shape settings panel. Here, you can modify the rendering of the facial animation with several tools. First, to close correctly called mouse, you have to set the shape that manages the mouse motion to zero. You can use the search bar to look for the specific shape. In my case, the shape that I'm looking for is jaw open. Now, I use the sidebar to force the value to zero. The mouse looks instantly better. Second, try to make Cole's face more expressive. To do that, we will amplify some shapes. For example, let's make her eyes more malicious. Identify the right shapes. After, right click on the label and select Add Amplifier. We can boost the shape value by entering 2.0 to make the animation twice as much living. You can see the effect instantly. Now, I will boost other shapes and I will show you the result after. Right, as you can see, I boosted eyebrows, lips, and eyelids. To me, Cole's animation is much better than before. It's good, but we can go further. It could be great to create a head movement in order to add dynamism to the facial animation. In a normal way, it is not possible to get a head movement by using HMC system. So, we will use the shrewd mechanism provided by the plugin to get around this constraint. The idea is to use the eyes rotation to animate Cole's head. To do that, we have to create a new association between the head bone and one of the eyes bones. Thanks to this association, eyes translation and rotation will be applied to the head bone. Let's focus on the bone settings panel. Here, we can create the new needed association by clicking on this. Now, select one of the eyes as ESC bone and select the head bone as targeted bone. Then, apply the association. Well, we have head rotation now. Of course, we want the head to stay at its previous position. So, we have to get rid of the translation. For that, disable the update of the position of the newly created association. Then, right-click on the position label and select Reset to Not Hold. Okay, the head is at the right place. It's better like that. The head rotation seems a bit too important. As we did before for the shapes, I re-ease the rotation by adding amplifier on the head rotation. Let's see what we can get. After a few seconds, here is the result I got. I let you compare the result before and after. Of course, if necessary, we can remove the modifications we made before. It's very simple. For the amplifiers, just click on the cross and the effects will disappear instantly. If you want to remove an association, click on this button and select yes. Repeat these actions for all the associations and all the amplifiers you want to remove. If you want to restart fresh, you can reset all the customization at once. Let me show you how to do it. Focus on the ESC settings panel. This panel allows you to load manually an ESC file that will reset all the bones and blend shapes associations according to this file's data. All the added amplifiers will be removed too. So, if you select the right ESC file corresponding to your real-time profile in Grabber, the plugin will reset bones and blend shapes information. It's a good way to clear previous testing and give you a fresh start. Load an ESC file will only reset bones and blend shapes panel. There is a final way more drastic to reset everything you did in the plugin. First, remove the component from your character. Then, remove the JSON file corresponding to your character in the Dixis folder. Previous plugin saves all the modification in this JSON file and load it when you restart Unity. Also, this JSON file is exported when you build your Unity project and it is read by the executable. Therefore, you can edit this file by your own in order to adjust some details rather than modify the inspector and rebuild your project. And after that, you can link the plugin to your character as at the beginning. All changes will be gone.
Now, we will see the last feature of the plugin. You can control the grabber recording function through the plugin recording panel. Of course, this feature is useful only if you aren't streaming a video already. To show you, we will load a live and sync profile in Grabber and use the laptop webcam. Let's go back to Grabber and load a live instant profile. I created the second profile using our generic solution, Live Instant, which can track any face and is really quick to set up. Select it by clicking on Load Live Instant. In this window, choose the free head operational mode because this time we will use the webcam instead of the HMC. Then click on camera and select your webcam. Beforehand, I load a new Unity project expressly for Live Instant. I linked the plugin to this 3D model and I configured the connection settings as before. Now, when I play the scene, I can see cold facial animation corresponding to my face movement. Let's focus on the last available panel in the plugin, the recording settings panel. Here, we have to set the same recording port number as in Grabber. Come back to Grabber and open the Network Triggers Options window. To do that, click on Network and Triggers option. Be sure that previous plugins is enabled. Now, just copy the listing port and pass it in the plugins recording port. Then, edit the Grabber file name pattern by clicking on Configure file name pattern and set the current pattern to %f to let the plugin video file name override the grabber video file name. Also, you can modify the video file name that will be saved by clicking on this button. You can change the use pattern to automatically set the name of the video. For example, let's remove the date and modify video shot by video tuto. At each recording, the counter value will be incremented. Don't forget to validate your modifications. Next, you can change the video's destination folder. Click here and select the right location. Now, launch the recording by clicking on this button. To stop the recording, click another time on the button. If we check inside the Set Destination folder, we will see the video that we just recorded. We are coming to the end of this tutorial. I hope that I have answered as much questions as possible. If you have any other interrogation, don't hesitate to check the documentation. You can reach it by clicking on the little button at the top right corner of the plugin. If needed, you can join our support team at support at dynamicsys.com. Goodbye.